Here we go. We're live on Ecamm now. And we're live on Zoom. So, um, it's 5.58. And um, we're going to get into this lesson. Um, this is, this is uh, Colossians chapter 4. It's, it's a difficult book for a lot of people. And um, hopefully I can explain um, Paul wrote this. Paul did not write the letter, but Paul um, spoke. And Onesimus and Tychias, I think was his name is, uh, let me see. His name is, uh, I can see it, I can, I can say it. Um, Tychicus. Tychicus, 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 and Onesimus um, went to Rome, where where Paul spoke, and they wrote they wrote this letter that was written to the Colossians. So it's a it's a pretty um, good letter. I need to explain some things in it so that people um, don't get um, you know some people get really. Um, I messed up by it. Hey there, Jesse. Jesse's online. I guess they didn't get no snow yet up there in Pennsylvania. Sometimes Pennsylvania gets snow early up there. And so hopefully they didn't get no snow yet. Anyway, we're going to get started. Hey, Jesse. I, I was saying, I hope you guys hey. didn't get no snow up there yet. Hey, no. Gwen hey Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn, I'm I I um left my keys at my job and so I'm sitting in my car. So you can't see me real good. Um but I'm sitting here and I did not want to not do Bible study tonight. So I'm actually in my car, not a whole lot of light where you can actually see me, but prayerfully you can hear me. And uh, we can go ahead and get started. So let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for today. We're so grateful for your grace and so grateful for your mercy. We're so grateful, Lord, to be able to be in the land of the living where we can learn and where we can grow and where we can deepen our relationship with you through Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful, God, for your Holy Spirit that lives in us, God. I'm so grateful, God, that you have allowed us, Heavenly Father, to learn and to understand your word. So tonight I ask, Father, that we simply um, give ourselves over to the teaching and the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Having read the scripture and studied the scripture, I ask now that you give us revelation and understanding that, Lord, we will continue in this walk. We will continue to honor you as God Almighty. We thank you, Father, and we bless you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good evening for those of you online. Good evening, April. Um, those of you coming online, um, yes, it's dark. Um, I'm in my car simply because I left my keys um, at work. And um, I just pray that you can hear me, even though you cannot see me that well. Um, you can hear me, and, and that's what's important. So we're in the last book of Colossians. And this last letter, um, Paul is in prison actually in Rome. And Tychicus and Onesimus actually transcribed this letter and took it to the Colossians and um, was reading the different letters that Paul had transcribed. So this book of chapter 4 can be a little... Um, I'm overbearing for some people because of how our minds work and maybe what we have been taught. So in Colossians chapter 4, let's look at verse 1. And, pa and Paul addresses his um, this letter to, at this particular point, to those who own slaves. Okay. Now, what I want you to understand is that slavery during Paul's time was nothing like slavery that it was uh, happened here in America. It was a totally different type of, of, of those who were enslaved. 
And in many instances, in Paul's time, um, people who would borrow or would um, 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 rent and weren't able to pay simply became the slaves of the person that they owed. And they would work for that person um, until the debt was paid off. And so, um, so when you think about um, when Paul was talking about slavery, he is not talking about the type of slavery that we had here in America, which was atrocious. And people were, were treated so, so badly. But listen what Paul says to the masters. And he called them masters simply because they had slaves. Okay? So don't let that, don't let that throw you. Because it throws a whole lot of people. Hey, mommy knows best. Blessings to you. Okay, so let's look at um, um, verse number one of Colossians chapter four. And Paul said, Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. So Paul was saying to the to those um, who who had servants, they referred to them as servants, but it was actually slaves. He said, um, make sure that you're treating them equal and just, that you're paying them a, fa a, a fair wage and that they're working off their debt in an honest manner. Number two, Paul then tells the Colossians to continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Can I encourage you guys um, during this time to continue in prayer and don't forget to thank God every day. Because it's by the grace of God that we're, we're here. And it's by the grace of God that um, we have the activity of our limbs. We're in our right minds. And so we don't want to take that for granted. We want to we thank the Lord every day. So you can use this where he says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us. And so Paul is also requesting prayer, seeing that he's in prison for the God, for preaching the gospel. That's why Paul was in prison. He said that God will open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mysteries of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, or I am also in prison as a result of me preaching this gospel truth. And so you can find that that this is just as much uh, today that God would give you utterance. Remember, you got family members that are not saved. You might have a mom or a dad or uncle who's not saved. And so we need to continue to pray for them, even in this season when we can get so um, um, I'm distracted with Christmas coming up and people going out buying gifts and then there are people who can't afford to eat. Because they can't heat their homes. Um, people who don't have enough money to really survive because food is so high. And, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm really blessed because I believe the Bible. God told, told, tells me in the Word of God, Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So God is simply going to take care of us. God's going to make sure we have what we need. God's going to make sure that, that we have food to eat simply because we obey his word. And we need to be obedient to God's word. So let's look at verse number three. Um, I read that. With all praying for us also that God will open unto us, he said, the door of utterance to speak the mysteries of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. Number four, that I may make make it manifest as I ought to speak. So Paul said that I may speak God's truth. And in speaking God's truth, I can make it known to others. I simply, listen guys, I'm simply here to make God's truth known to you. That That is, that is what I want more than anything, is for you to know the truth of God's word and not only to know it, but to also to live it out. That's my prayer for you, is that you would live out the word of God. Hey, Delante, good evening. And so we have to be careful that we don't get distracted in this day and time as a result of the distractions that can happen 
around this Christmas time. So look at verse number five in Colossians chapter four, which is the last chapter of, of the book. Paul says in number five, walk in wisdom. Paul tells us to walk in what? Wisdom. Wisdom of what? Wisdom of the word of God. What you have learned, what you have been instructed in. He said, walk in wisdom towards them that are without or those that are not part of the family of Christ. Look what he says. Redeeming the time. Understanding that, that the time is short and we don't have a lot of time. And so it is imperative that we redeem the time and that we simply walk in the wisdom of God. Number six, let your speech be always with grace. So what is Paul saying? Paul is saying when you are interacting with someone that may not be as knowledgeable as you, may not have a, a clear understanding as you do, don't talk down to those individuals, but allow the grace of God to, to season your words. Look what Paul says. He says, uh, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how, how you ought to answer every person that is seeking the truth. Don't spend time arguing about God's word, fussing about God's word. Sometimes you can just be a seed planter, someone who, who has simply uh, planted the seed, of, the seed of the word of God, and in planting the seed of the word of God, you begin to help somebody else to understand the word of God. Now, for those of you that are coming online, I left my keys at work. So I'm actually sitting in my car because I did not want Bible study not to happen tonight. And so that's why you see me um, kind of like in the dark, sort of. But um, I got the flashlight on. So let's finish. Go to the next verse. Um. Let's see here. Paul says in number seven, um, he says, all my state, all my state, Tachiacus declared unto you who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. He tells the Colossians, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know your estate and comfort your hearts. And so simply, um, um, that's why it's important to kind of like get in church so that so that we can know your state and so that we can pray for you. And even if we have to lay hands on you, according to the word of God, to simply pray for you. Now, it's imperative that Paul is encouraging the Colossians. I want to encourage you. You know, it can be some tough days ahead. It can be some tough days that you're facing. But remember, your faith is not in your ability, but your faith is in God. Your faith is in his word and we need to live by his word. We need to uh, operate by his word because when we operate and live by the word of God, then we can most assuredly expect the blessings of God to come upon us as we obey God at his word. Okay, look at verse number. Um, they show me. Oh, he says, um, he says, number nine, with Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, which is one of you, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. So, so to him, Paul said, I'm going to encourage you that they are going to share with you God's word that, that you would know of how I'm doing while I'm in prison, but also that I'm doing great because even though I'm in prison, I get an opportunity to write this letter to you. Let's go on to verse number um, eight, number nine. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, let's go to 10. Archiachus, my fellow prisoner. So Paul is simply in prison with um, another brother. He's in prison with uh, another brother. Archiachus, my fellow prisoner, salute you. And Marcus, sister's son, Sister's son to Barak, to Barnabas, touching whom you receive commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. And Jesus, which is called Justice, this is God, wasn't Jesus, but he was called Justice, who are of the circumcision. So he's saying he's sending these guys, or he's sending this Jew, this guy's a Jew who was under circumcision. Basically, he's a he is a um 
reformed uh, Pharisee, one who had turned to the to the gospel of Jesus Christ and have left the uh, practicing the law. So Paul said, all these people I'm sending to encourage you. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you to don't give up on your prayers. I want to encourage you to stay faithful to God's word. I want to encourage you to continue to pray for your children, even if they're not living according to God's precept. I want to encourage you that God is faithful to his word. Don't you ever give up on God's word, okay? Then he goes on, the salutation by the hand of me, Paul, remember me in my bonds and grace be unto you. And so Paul, so Paul ends the letter uh, and he ends the letter by um, I'm letting them know that um, um, he uh, uh, had had signed the letter himself. Hey, Krishan. Oh, I'm so glad you're on, Krishan. Blessings to you. So you can see from Colossians chapter 4 that Paul's letter was, was really uh, talking to those who, who had servants who were actually slaves, also to encourage them to stay in the faith. We, we are in the last days, people. And I mean, there's some things that are transpiring um, um, today that we need to simply pray for each other. There's some people facing some tremendous, tremendous, tremendous trials. Um, and it's like every weekend for the past two or three weekends, I have done funerals. People have called me to um, perform the eulogy at these funerals. And we and we done, and the Lord has moved greatly in that um, we had um, many people who have come to the Lord after hearing the message of Jesus Christ. For those of you that are coming on, you wonder why I'm in the dark. I left my keys at work, so I'm doing this from my car. And I did not not want to have Bible study tonight. I wanted to have Bible study tonight so that I can share with you the Word of God. See, I'm committed. I'm committed to teaching the proof. I'm committed to living the proof. And I'm living to help you to understand God's truth. That any question that you have, you can always put it down in the comment section. So that that concludes um, um, Colossians, the book of Colossians um, and, and it concludes uh, number four. So we're going to move on from um, um, Colossians chapter four and we're going to simply go into our next book, which is First Thessalonians. So we're moving into First Thessalonians. And um, I want you to know that um, 1 Thessalonians is, is, a, is, a, is a powerful book of Paul. And it was calling, they were actually from the city of Thessalonica, just like the Colossians were from, from a city of Colossae. So um, Paul, again, is, is now on his missionary journey, and he is actually going to um, uh, Thessalonica. To, to do what he did in Colossians, and that is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, you know, I'm going to really pray for you tonight and pray that your faith do not fail. You know, many times we can pray prayers and and we can become, we can come some kind of little uh, apprehensive because our prayers aren't being answered in a time frame that maybe we think God should answer them. But you know, God's not on your timetable. God's not on my timetable. One thing God wants us to learn, he wants us to learn to be patient. He wants us to learn to trust him at his word. That um, that no matter what happens in our life, that God is faithful to his word, okay? So I want you to, I want, I want to encourage you tonight that God is what? God is faithful to his word. So we want to thank God for his word tonight and thank God that, that we have the word of God. So if you have your Bibles, and you should have your Bibles, go to 1 Thessalonians, and we're going to start at verse 1. Okay, so let's go to 1 Thessalonians, and it says, Paul and Salvanius and Timothy unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul writes this letter, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what I want you to understand, I want you to get bored with, with, 
with with um with scripture. Because sometimes you can get so unoccupied that you only hear what I'm saying. You need to develop yourself to where you are reading along with me. And if there's any questions that you have, you can always put them in the comment section. And if I know the answer, I'll put it in the comment section. If I don't know the answer, I will simply um, find out, uh, make sure that you have the answer that you're looking for. And there are some things in 1 Thessalonians, buddy, that um, um, we, we really need to discuss. So let's look at verse 2. Paul said, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. And that should, and I'm asking you, I'm asking you to pray for me. I'm asking you to pray for me. I'm asking you to pray that I continue to preach God's truth. I'm asking you to pray for me that I, I won't wind up in error. I'm asking you to pray for me that I continue to be faithful to God's word. See, none of us can, can really be successful without the prayers of one another. And so it's not, it's not that I'm not, a, I'm never ashamed of asking for prayer. Even when everything is going good, that's when I really need prayer. Because that's when a lot of times you can you can actually um, lose focus. It's when there's no issues, there's no problems, no money problems, no relationship problems. And we find ourselves, because there's no problems, we don't pray. We don't read our Bible like we used to. But as soon as something happens, or as soon as something breaks out, we want to pray. And then we want to read our Bible. And you'll find yourself at, at, a, at a really, at a, at a bad place. Because, you know, it's kind of difficult to kind of muster faith, you know, when something happens. That's why we have to practice and live by faith every day, not just when something happens. The most difficult time that you're going to have in your Christian walk is, is not when you have an issue. It's when there's no problems. That's when most Christians uh, let up. That's what happened to the Israelites. When the Israelites had food and they had no issues and no problems at all, that is when they would turn away from God and begin to turn to false gods and, and false idols. I don't want that, that to happen to us. So let's go on to verse number two. Paul said, we give thanks to God always for you all. Good evening, Kiana. We in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 because we finished Colossians chapter 4 and we moved to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and we have verse number 2. So Paul is writing this letter to the Thessalonians. Remember that. This is this is the love that Paul had for them. He had for the Colossians. He had for the Galatians. He had for the Philippians. Paul did this travel and he would travel from the city to city as being led by the Holy Spirit but in some cases, Paul was in prison writing these letters to encourage those um, who were in the faith. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage. I simply want to encourage you. He said, number two, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. That's why I asked you to pray for me. Don't think that I'm Superman. I, I live every day, one day at a time. And I live to live for God with all my heart, all my mind, and all my strength. Even though I've been doing this um, pastoring now, next year will be 30 years. And I want to be as passionate in the 30 years as I was when I first started. I want to be as dedicated in the, in the years that I have left on earth as I was when I first started. 30 years ago, I started Life Changing Faith. And many of you guys were part of that. Many of you guys have blessed me so much. I'm so grateful. Many of you guys have supported this ministry and allowed us to, to stay in the building that we're in, allow uh, us to have um, just, just, just being able to bless people. Believe me, when you get to heaven, every soul that comes to Christ, every person that is delivered, every person that is set free by the power of God, you have made that happen along with me, and I'm grateful for you. Thank you so much. Okay, <clears throat> Paul said, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love. Now, I want to, I want to encourage you. The Bible says in Jude, the just shall live by faith. 
Faith in what? Faith in God's word. Because without faith, the Bible says it's what? Impossible to please God. Okay? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So Paul said, remembering, without ceasing, Paul said, I'm not going to stop. Your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus. You can't lose hope in Christ. You can't lose hope in his word. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you tonight. I'm doing this from my car simply because I have a passion and I have a heart that I want you to understand and to know the word of God. I want you to know that I'm praying for you and that I, I want you to, to be able to walk in the fullness of God and to increase in your knowledge and understanding of God's word. It's important to me. Um, it's important that I pray for you. Every name that I see on this, on this thing, I'm praying for you. I'm going to pray for you. I promise you, I will call your name out and ask God to strengthen you. Ask God to give you wisdom and understanding. Asking God that he would enlighten you and and that the word of God would become a, 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 a strong, strong point in your life, okay? So, he said, remembering number three, without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God, our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. Now, let me tell you something. And, and let me be very clear. When a person gets saved, they're saved. Salvation is, um, has nothing to do with your work. I want, I want to make sure I'm clear. Salvation has everything to do with what Christ did on the cross. You understand what I'm saying? So you accepted the agreement of salvation. You asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Now, there are many people who are saved because it's not by works. If you see somebody smoke or you see somebody drink and you say, hey, they're not saved, then you're saying salvation is by works. Salvation is not by works. Salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ, okay? Now, the reason we don't do those things or we don't practice sin is because we are saved, okay? But we are not stopping those things to get saved. You get saved simply by believing that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that he died on the cross for your sins. So there's many people out there that are saved, but are living a sinful lifestyle. They still belong to God. God never gives up on them. God never closes the door on them. Now, the question comes in when you die and you stand before God, and if you die in your sins, you'll be judged a sinner. And I would like, you know, that's what I'm doing this documentation on um, in our discipleship training is to explain salvation so you understand clearly of what salvation is. There's no such thing. I preached on this, that you can lose your salvation. That's not even a biblical term or word. And I think that Satan implement, implement that into the church that people start talking about losing salvation. You don't, you can't lose salvation because you didn't earn it. It was given to you by grace, by faith through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, okay? So let me give you an example. The thief on the cross never joined the church. The thief on the cross never spoke in tongues. The thief on the cross never was baptized. But the thief on the cross winded up in paradise with Jesus. Why? Simply because he believed that Jesus was the son of God. And Jesus said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Having never went to church, never had hands laid on him, never did any good deeds or any work. He simply believed that Jesus was the atoning Christ. And he believed that he was the son of God and he was in paradise. So, those of you out there, I want you to understand that salvation is based on Jesus' work and Jesus alone. Hey, Monica, blessings to you. Okay, so let's look at verse um, numbers 5 of 1 Thessalonians chapter, chapter 1. 
for our gospel cannot, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, Paul said, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So Paul said, our gospel came not for you in word only. And I'm telling you, there's power in the word of God. There is deliverance in the word of God. There is healing in the word of God. But that healing and deliverance can only take place when you believe it by faith. You have to believe by faith that when we pray that God is moving and God is stretching forth his hands over your body. And if any of you are sick right now, I will stop and take the opportunity along with all the other believers on here and we will pray for you and that you would experience the awesome power of God, the healing virtue of God. Um, Sister Ernestine has, has, has um, experienced that power over and over and over again. And so many of you have experienced that, the power of God. And so when Paul said, for our gospel came not unto you in word only. We just didn't speak this thing. See, there's some people that can only speak the word but can't live it. So Paul said there's some people that can speak the word, but there's no power of the word. So let me let me give you a caveat on something that I taught on. The Bible says, for the word of God is what? Powerful, right? Sharp. The any two-edged sword, sword, going down to the asunder of bone and marrow, and is the zerner of the tent and the heart of mankind. Okay, so here's my question. And most of the people that, that heard the message that I taught, when is the word of God powerful in your life? Is it when you write it? Is it when you read it? Because I know many people who don't even live for God that can quote the Bible, but have not, never experienced the power of God's word. Power of deliverance power of healing let me tell you when the word of god is powerful the word of god is powerful in your life to overcome all obstacles to give you strength in your weakest moments is when you live it and believe it by faith that's when the word of god is powerful can somebody type amen for me i'm living out the word of god is powerful in my life the word of God is active in my life. Yes, when you put it into practice, when you put it into practice, when you're sick, when you're sick, the Bible says, anoint yourself with oil. The Bible says to worship God and thank God. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, you want to, I'm tired of these dead people, dead people, words out of your mouth, and you're not experiencing the power of God's word. See, you can experience the power of God's word let me tell you something, when you buy yourself, all you got to do, hey, Janie, all you have to do is begin to, the hardest thing for people to do is when you're going through, is to worship God. So right now, listen, to, look what it says here. For He said, for our gospel, hey, Brian, blessings to you. Hey, Brian, let you know I'm praying for your mom and dad. Um, I want you to know that they don't go by, that I don't pray for them. They've been very instrumental in my life a tremendous influence. And I want you to know, brother, I will never forget. I will always pray for them and you and your family as well. So listen to what I'm saying to you. I want you to experience the, the power of God's word. I, I don't want, I know you're going to have moments where you may doubt or you may, you may feel like I done prayed and I don't see no changes. A lot of times uh, that happens simply because we are stuck in the pity party. And we have not yet learned how to worship. So um, right now, right now, many of you online, I want to take this moment with you and we're going to worship together. OK, I, I want you to, to, to get into a mode that when I'm at my lowest point, when I'm at my, my hardest trial, I want I have learned to worship God in that moment. So right now, I, I know it's going to be awkward. I know it's not going to seem right. It's not going to feel right. But we're going to worship together right now. And so I want, I want you to do. I want you to just start worshiping with me. Okay? Just for a few minutes. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, God. We praise you, God. 
We're so thankful, God. Thank you for food on the table, God. Thank you for jobs to go to, God. Thank you for the healing of my mind, God. Thank you, God. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, God. I give you praise, God. Even in the midst of my trial, I give you glory, God. I give you honor, God. I worship you tonight, God. I give you praise for all that you've done, God. I give you praise for bringing me through, God. I give you praise for what you're carrying me through, God. I worship you tonight. Come on, lift your hands up. I worship you tonight, God. Hallelujah to your name, God. It's even uncomfortable, God. But may I overcome my flesh, overcome my thoughts, God, overcome my insecurities, God. Oh, I lift my hands to you right now, and I thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah to your holy name. Hallelujah, Lord. I worship you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I worship you, Father. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor right now that you're carrying me through my trials. Lord, you're with me even when I don't feel like it. Lord, you're blessing me even when I don't think I'm blessed. I worship you tonight and I worship you alone, oh God. I give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. These are things we must put in practice. You can't just talk it. He said, for our gospel came unto you in the fifth verse, not, not unto you in word only, but also in power. When you begin to worship, God releases power into your life. You hear me? Even when you're hurting, God will release power in your life when you begin to worship him. Do you know the word? Amen. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. But now you have to begin to allow the word of God to, to be manifested by worship. See, you won't worship if you don't believe it. You, you, you can talk it all day, but you must learn to worship God. Sometimes going to work and you got to face some tough situations. Start worshiping God before you get there. That when you get in the door, because the anointing that's going to be on your life is going to change the atmosphere. When you don't know what to do, start worshiping God. Start giving God praise. Start thanking God. He will give you the directions. Remember Proverbs um, chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge God, and he will, he will direct your path. You got it. So, for our gospel, Paul said, this gospel that I'm preaching came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance. I'm assured that when you worship God, listen, the reason why a lot of you have not experienced the change that, uh, things that you've been praying is simply because you have not worshiped. And I, listen, I want you to learn to worship without music. I want you to learn to worship without your favorite song. I want you to learn to worship, to come up with your own melody to God. See, I, I don't have to have music on. I have learned to worship God with my own melody. I'm telling you, I can just bust off with a worship and I just started worshiping and, and this song will come out of my spirit that would just bless God and honor God. Amen. So, so all this learning that we're getting and all this word that we have the privilege of understanding is great. But let me tell you something. What, what activates the word in your life is when you worship. And I'm, I can I can sense in my spirit, I'm speaking prophetically, a lot of you have not been worshiping. A lot of you have been complaining. A lot of you have allowed yourself to look at your situation that have caused you to make decisions outside of the word of God. And we don't talk about worship enough. We think that worship only happens in church or that worship only happens when we're a group of people. Let me tell you something. Your greatest time with God is not going to be in, with a group of people. 
your greatest time with God is going to be when you learn and you put into practice every day when you can worship God by yourself. When you can just bust off with a worship and tell God how good he is. Start thanking God. Even in the midst of my situation, like the three Hebrew boys, the three Hebrew boys said, we know God is able. Everybody on this line know God is able. But they said, even if God, God don't, hallelujah, even if God don't do it, I'm going to worship him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to glorify him. You see, even if he don't do it, but I know he able, all right? That's when the power of the word is released to give you the peace, the comfort, and the patience to go through. You see, a lot of us want God to answer our prayers without any worship, without any thanksgiving at all. You see, even though I know that my children might not be living the way they ought to be living, I thank God for their salvation. Lord, I thank you that they're saved. I thank you, God, for moving on their life. I thank you, God, they're coming back to you. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. You see, you have to thank God before you see it, before you see it. You see, many people have hope. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't rest in hope. Many people have hope. Hope is something that you rejoice after it happens. Faith is I rejoice before it happens. You understand? That's why I walk by faith. That's why I worship in the midst of my situation, in the midst of my problem. I started worshiping God, thanking God, honoring God, knowing that God's going to come through for me. I've been in this race long enough to know that the power of God's word is released when you learn to worship, when you learn to praise him without putting on a song and somebody else's word. If songs are good. I love worship. Don't get me wrong now. But can you come up with your own worship? Can you just sit there and it's nothing, just you and God and start thinking? That's when the relationship becomes real. That's when relationship is deep and, is, and the power of God's word is released when you can do that. And many of us have not, have not put that into practice. Some of you haven't worshiped in months, maybe for two years. Because the pain of the situation you was going through, you focus more on the issue than you did on God. That's why the Bible says, if you can see it with the eye, it's temporary. But what cannot be seen is eternal. Hallelujah. So it, whatever situation you're facing right now, I want you, when you think about it, to start worshiping God. Every time I get on Bible study, I'm gonna have, we're going to start off with a worship. And we're going to worship God. And we're going to thank God. So you thank God for the day. I thank God for the day. I thank God for my trials. I thank God for, for the Holy Spirit convicting me of sin. I thank God for strength to overcome sin. You see, when you start thinking about all the things that God has done in your life. And how many times that God has come through for you. How many times God never gave up on you, but you gave up on God. And yet God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God said, in your worst moments, I'll be with you. In your toughest moments, he said, I'll bring you out. But I'm not going to bring you out without you learning how to love me, how to trust me, how to have faith in me. You see, that's why this scripture right here, I'm going to start right here. Um, at number five, for our gospel came not unto you in word. I love that. The gospel is not is more than just the words on the page. It's more than that. The, the, the word of God is powerful. It's powerful to, to, to produce in your life when you're lonely, when you're struggling, when you have problems with thoughts. I'm telling you, worship will keep you, keep your mind stabilized. The word, if just the Holy Ghost will bring the word back to you. So tonight, you know. Um, we only got a few more minutes to go, but that number five, I want to read that number five of First Thessalonians all the way through. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. You know what God delivered you out of. You know how God delivered you. You know how God, how God, even in your worst moments, God was with you. 
even when you felt so lonely and so low, God was with you. Do you think God is going to give up on you? God going to never give up on you because you are a child of God. He is going to strengthen you. But I want to teach you how to deepen your relationship. And that relationship comes through worship. It comes through worship. People, let me tell you. Um, and I'm talking about personal worship. I'm talking about when you get off this phone and you get ready to go to bed tonight. You want to sleep good? Do you want a restful sleep where your mind don't don't run and don't don't run? Worship God before you go to sleep. Start thanking God before you go to sleep. And then just go to sleep. I'm telling you, the Bible says, um, he that keepeth his mind stayed on me. God said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. So tonight, we're going to end with prayer and we're going to end with worship. Now, I, don't, I love teaching the word, but the word of God will be of no effect in your life if you don't live it and put it into practice. Once you get a knowledge of the word, an understanding of the word, then we must learn to worship God, okay? So this week, this is Wednesday, I want you to learn to worship for the next four days all the way up to Sunday. I want you to worship. In your car, I want you to worship. On your way to work, I want you to worship. I'm telling you, you got somebody at work? Um, Kashawn, I know sometimes on these jobs, you supervisors, you people that are working, when you have trouble on your job, stop talking about the problem. Stop going to sinners with the problem, talking about people on the job. God told me to tell you tonight, start worshiping before you get there. Stop praising before you get there. Change the atmosphere. You are the agent of God, and God is going to use you in the midst to bring peace. You are the peacemaker, but you would not be the peacemaker if you don't learn how to worship. You got it? So let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that the, the word of God is powerful. It's only powerful when we live it. But God put into our spirit this week an unction to worship. God, teach us, teach us how to worship, how to sing songs in our heart unto you, Lord. Let us not meditate on the problem or the issue. Let us not meditate on past issues and problems. But God, maybe through worship, we come into your very throne room, God. So we ask you tonight, in Jesus' name, at the sound of my voice, and everybody's online, before they go to sleep, Lord, may they worship you as I worship you. And I worship you tonight for this Bible study. That they that worship you will have peace tonight and will rest in their minds and in their souls and in their bodies. Let them wake up refreshed. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Come on, everybody. I thank you, Father. I'm going to sleep tonight. I thank you, Father. I'm going to rest tonight. I thank you, Father. But my challenges and my situations and, my, and the problems that I face in this life will not inundate my mind and cause me not to sleep. I thank you tonight, God. I praise you. I magnify you. And I glorify you in Jesus' name. So tonight... I want everybody to have a good testimony that you slept well. But the only way you're going to sleep well tonight, I'm just giving you a word what God gave me. Worship before you go to sleep. Thank God before you go to sleep. And I guarantee you with full assurance, it'll be the best sleep you had in a long time. So thank you tonight. Blessings to you. Blessings to you, Jesse, up there in Pennsylvania. I know y'all ain't got no snow yet. <laughs> well, blessing to you, Krishan, up there in the mountains and beautiful uh, Harrisonburg. I think that's where she lives at. Blessings to you up there and blessing to all of you online. I will pray for you. I will seek God for you. But you deepen your relationship with God when you worship, okay? All right. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Those of you on Zoom, talk to you soon. Blessings to you on Zoom. See you later. Bye-bye. God bless. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody on Ecamm Live. Love you tonight. Thank you for being on with me, even though I'm sitting here in Malo Hikes in my car doing Bible study. To me, it was fantastic. Oh, it was fantastic. I tell you, I'm enjoying this tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. 
They don't know how they encourage me tonight. They don't know, God, how they bless me tonight. Thank you for being on with me. Thank you in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful night in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Sleep good, but don't forget to worship in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>